Hi, my name is Noah Gift, and today I'm going to show you how to use AWS Lambda alongside AWS Step Functions to build out sophisticated event-driven services. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Let's go ahead and take a look here at building a Lambda function for a step function workflow. To start out, what we do is uh, go ahead and write in a function name. In this case, we'll go ahead and call this uh, fruits, and then we'll say uh, Python 3.9. Here we go. And then I'll go ahead and uh, create a function. Once I've done this, the next step is for me to go through and uh, really code things up inside of this web-based console. And what's nice about the Lambda console is that it's got really everything I need in order to build a uh, microservice or event-driven architecture. And in fact, here we go, here's the source code. Uh, you can see the example here is quite simple. There's only eight lines of code. And in fact, uh, I can go and tweak this just a little bit to get something working. In this case, I would put something inside of the uh, to-do, and then I would uh, use that return statement to my advantage. So let's go ahead and uh, build something out here and uh, code this up. Uh, keep in mind that the event here that I've noted is where I would parse things. So I can test events, I can configure events, uh, and I can also invoke those events either from AWS Cloud9 or some other tool. So in order to get started, I'm going to grab some code that I've got in another repo. And uh, this repo is called uh, functions from zero to, and I have a little bit of code here in a library. I'll go ahead and uh, reuse it. So very, very tiny amount of code here. I can just grab this and uh, throw this into our Lambda console. That should make things quite easy. Here we go. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just paste this in here and just really tweak things up. I've got uh, this uh, from random and poor choices. I have a fruit generator. It returns back a random fruit. That looks good. And then inside of this particular repository, uh, all I need to do is just keep in mind that the event is what's passed in. And so depending on what is actually invoking it, uh, I would want to parse that event in a certain way. In this case, because I want to grab fruit, I can actually just say, uh, basically, you know, let's take that event and assign it into a fruit variable. So I say event, uh, go ahead and uh, parse in the word fruit, and then this will pass that into this variable. Next up, I can use that function I've got above there and actually pass that into the fruit generator function. Perfect. And there we go. I just passed that fruit variable in. And then what I'll want to do is actually put that into uh, a variable, and we'll call this one chosen, uh, chosen fruit, because this will be the randomly chosen fruit. And then from here, uh, now I just need to figure out a way to return that value. And this is where the return statement below comes into play. And what I can do is I can, in fact, add, add some kind of uh, logic. In this case, I'll do a print statement so that I can later look at this print statement when I'm debugging the system. Always a good idea with something like Lambda, which is serverless, in that uh, I don't know if I will be able to see things if I don't have this logging trail. And so in this case, I pr print initially you know, what was passed in, and then I call the function, and then I, from here, say, you know, let's go ahead and uh, print this out here. We selected this fruit for you, great. Uh, frozen, uh, chosen fruit, perfect. Uh, and now notice I did uh, go through here and uh, make a mistake where I didn't put the quote at the end there. That's not a big deal. I can fix that later. Uh, and in fact, it'll help us test uh, how robust our architecture is. And then notice I'm going to need to tweak this a little bit. So let's go ahead and uh, uh, go and change this. So we'll put a statement here that will allow me to return back the... Um, the results. In, in this case, we'll pick in chosen fruit. That's exactly what I want to return. And it looks like we're set. So I'll go ahead and deploy the function. Once I've deployed that function, I can configure a test event. And this test event 
is really useful because I can simulate different scenarios. In this case, I'm gonna simulate just somebody invoking it. I could also simulate a call from another AWS service. But from here, this is pretty simple. I would just say fruit and then put in the, the name of the fruit. Uh, and I can also do format JSON. And uh oh, look, it noticed that there was actually a comma problem, right? And so this really actually a pretty useful uh, debugging tool in itself to just test the test. There we go. Let's go ahead and test it. Uh oh, we have a problem. Uh, fortunately, because I have some good uh, instrumentation in here, some printing, things like that, I can actually debug this. And it says, uh oh, string. Uh, EOL while scanning string literal, and I just look at what line it is. Perfect, line 15. Let's go back to line 15, find it. Ooh, there we go. We already knew about that, but let's go ahead and put that comma, I'm sorry, the uh, quotation in there. Let's go ahead and fix it, deploy it, test it again. Still got problems. Okay, well, what line of code is it? This is a great way to debug things. Let's again look, oh, line 19. Okay, let's go ahead and fix that. Uh, EOL while scanning string literal, right? line 19, we go back to our code. And of course, again, I have uh, a little bit of code there that was messed up, deploy it. Let's test it one more time, perfect. We've got a response code here, right? We have a status code and we have a body. So this is really nice in that I'm able to just very quickly debug a couple issues, but also build a function that I can actually invoke from other services. I can invoke it from the AWS CLI, I can invoke it from the Cloud9 environment using their utilities, and I also can build out AWS step functions. So there's a lot of power that I've got once I've got this hooked up inside of here. And in fact, what we can do here is uh, go back to our uh, Cloud9 environment, and I'm gonna go to the left here. Notice where it says AWS. I'm gonna uncollapse the, ES, the US East region, go to Lambda, find the name of the function, which is fruits. And if I right click on it, look at this, I can invoke this on AWS. So this is really why you would wanna use the AWS Cloud9 environment is it helps you uh, have a deep interaction with the environment that you're developing on. I think this is very important to point out. So here, I could just go through here and put in the payload. We could do again, the same thing. We could call this fruit put in some name of a fruit. In this case, this would be uh, a cherry, perfect. And then if I scroll down, I can just say invoke, awesome. We've got this uh, microservice uh, be able to be invoked inside of our Cloud9 uh, environments. Now, once we've got this, one of the things that would be great is to uh, go ahead and uh, see if there's another way that we can actually invoke this thing and there is, in fact, the way that I would recommend we make things a little bit more sophisticated is that we can go through here and first download it, check it in, so that I've got a copy of this inside of my GitHub repository. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's uh, double check it, look in the environment, and of course we see it right there under the functions from 02, fruits, perfect. Let's go ahead and check this in first so we have a copy of it. You can see a very simple piece of code. <clears throat> and what I'll do is just do a get status to double check that I've got everything uh, enabled here, perfect. Let's go ahead and say get add fruits. Go ahead and commit this and then push it. Okay, let's go ahead and do a get push. Perfect, we've got this pushed. Now that I've got that hooked up, now let's go into the step function system, which is a great place to try new out ideas. And I'm going to uh, go ahead and search for it, step functions, so we can coordinate distributed applications. Really one of the unsung heroes of AWS, you can do really sophisticated things with step functions. And in our case, I'm going to just select create state machine. Now uh, I can just leave everything default here and go ahead and uh, say next. And notice this GUI workflow here is truly amazing because I can decide what it is what it is I wanna do on AWS and I can just start dragging things inside. And in my location here, I'm going to grab 
the AWS Lambda invoke. There we go, perfect. Put this in. And what I would want to do is I would want to select my function that I just wrote. So I would just say select um, uh, function here. There we go, fruits. And, and we would just use whatever payload I invoke it from the step function. So step functions really wrap up lambdas and you can tie together multiple lambdas or multiple other operations inside of AWS. It, it really is a form of GUI or low code programming. Even though you write the code yourself, you can orchestrate things from a low code perspective. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build a second Lambda function and then I'm gonna use that Lambda function as the receiver from my original Lambda function. So this second Lambda function will really uh, take uh, the input from, I'm sorry, the output from the original Lambda function and then also process it. So you could see how you could chain together lots of different things. We'll call this one fruit salad. And uh, this fruit salad function, I just need to parse the logic a little bit to do things with uh, AWS Lambda. Let's go ahead and get this thing working here. Uh, so in, in this case, I would want to parse that payload. Really, that's the big takeaway. So how would we do this? Well, uh, I could go through here and parse that payload uh, very simply by pasting it in and just kind of building it from there. So I think that's a great way to kind of you know move move things around and, and get things cooking. <clears throat> All right, so let's go ahead and uh, maybe put that payload inside and try this out. That's a good way to start. And uh, once I do that, there we go. I can actually try this out here and uh, see what happens. And if I go in and I say payload, save, we can actually just uh, you know start implementing the way to parse it. And so how would I do this? I would just tweak things a little bit here to parse that payload. Uh, and that's really the way to think about building Lambda functions is you need to parse a payload and do something with it and then return back a value. And, and typically you wanna return something actionable so you can chain the events. And so here we go. Let's go ahead and parse this payload in right here. There we go, payload, event. And uh, in this particular scenario, maybe we don't wanna call it payload. Maybe we wanna call it something else. Maybe we wanna call it, uh, for example, uh, I guess we could do something like status code might be a better name to, to parse that out. So we'll say status code. And then we would say, uh, in this particular scenario, uh, event uh, status code. So what we could do with this actually is build some kind of logic where if there were problems parsing parsing the body, you know, for example, if the status code was not 200, then we could actually intercept it and, and prevent those errors from occurring. So in this case, I wanna take the body as well and say, if the status code is equal to 200, then we want you to uh, make the result the um, maybe some other kind of action, like uh, you know some some something fun here. So maybe we would say the result would be uh, a some kind of a payload, like successfully uh, parsed your 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 payload or something like this. So success, you have good fruit. This would be a good way to um, put this in there make this an F string so that we can parse that variable. That's great. Otherwise, we would say else the result would be, you know, maybe some other message, right? We would say, uh, for example, you have, uh, you know, a problem or some kind of incorrect uh, issue with your input. So this is a, this is a nice little error checking piece of code here. And, and you do want to do defensive programming when you're building a system that has lots of different kinds of inputs. So here we go, we say you have an incorrect input. So this looks pretty good. And uh, if we go through and we test this out, notice that um, it didn't do anything because I didn't deploy it. So I need to deploy this function. There we go, once I deploy it, then I can test it out. And there we go, we could say success, you have good fruit. So this is pretty close to what we need to do 
To be really sure though, let's go ahead and build another test function. So we can say configure test event, create a new event, and then make this the incorrect event. So this is a kind of a best practice for building AWS Lambdas is if you do have uh, different logic inside, why not test each of those events? So you do some functional testing. In this case, we would say status code 500, right? And so if I go ahead and I test the bad event, what happens is it says, uh oh, you have incorrect input, right? So we know both scenarios, the status code 200 or non-status code 200 both work. We're almost done. I just go ahead and I drag another Lambda inside and then I can actually uh, associate that Lambda with what it is I'm building. Let's go ahead and name it something different, this state name, so that it makes more sense. This one's parse event. And then this first one, uh, we can go ahead and name that thing something as well. Just something logical like grab fruit, perfect. And then inside of this uh, second Lambda, all I need to do is actually make it communicate with the fruit salad, perfect. Got this thing working. So really pretty straightforward. We're all set. Notice here that I've got a JSON data structure that shows everything I did. And that's a nice thing about the um, AWS step functions here is it gives you this nice structure. Now we just need to call this something and we'll call this one uh, fruit state machine. This looks like a good name for it. And uh, we'll go ahead and just say create state machine. Now to execute it, very easy. We just say start execution. It generates a, uh, a UUID, you know, a unique ID here for us. We just need to put in fruit, some name of the fruit, and this will chain the reaction together. So this is the start of our chain reaction. There we go. We're able to get this fruit and uh, push it into production. So really fun here. We got our fruit cooking. And now if I look at the, the output here, we have the output uh, working as well. So that's the also the amazing thing here about step functions is you can kind of chain through everything and walk through exactly what's happening in your code. So really step functions are quite easy to use and I recommend trying them out.